young soldiers are Norway's elite special forces. They are called Jaegers, which in English literally translates to the hunters. As part of NATO, the principal role of these commandos is reconnaissance and sabotage behind enemy lines. A Jaeger can expect to spend weeks at a time on his own or with a small team operating in a dangerous environment miles from home. Few individuals combine the intelligence, stamina, self-confidence and resourcefulness necessary for such work. We try to find persons who have a very high degree of self-confidence who are physically and psychologically fit for this kind of service and at the same time they must be able to cooperate with others. It's a sort of paradox, so to say, that they shall be very independent and at the same time they shall be able to work in a group with other people. But uh, I'm sure you understand what I mean when I say that uh, we are looking for persons with a great capacity when it comes to mental stableness and people I can rely upon because uh, they are supposed to, um, to get out on uh, very different uh, types of missions and uh, I must really trust in them if they operate in very small groups or alone and together with others as well. Now, I think that the Jaegers are unique in the way that they re reflect a typical Norwegian, that uh, the Norwegian is an outdoor man and these Jaegers, they like being outdoors and they've chosen a service, military service, when they stay outdoors most of the time. Much of Norway's modern defense policy stems from the lessons learned during the German invasion in 1940 and the subsequent five years of occupation. During the invasion, Norway had a neutral anti-militarist defense policy. The roots of the Jaegers and all of Norway's military can be traced back to the courageous resistance fighters of World War II. Their story is told here at the Resistance Museum in Oslo. It's important to note that the museum was started by the people of the Resistance. And they had one aim in mind, and that was to tell Norwegian people what it was to lose one's freedom, to be occupied, and what it cost to regain that freedom. And the last two words you'll find in this museum when you leave it is never again. That is the message. Never again to put Norway in a position to be occupied. The modern Norwegian military consists of 13,500 career soldiers inflated to 29,000 men with each year's intake of conscripts. The best 400 soldiers are recruited to join the Jaegers. These soldiers then go through a grueling selection process in which the attrition rate is over 90%. The way it is done, we um, have uh, different tests uh, that uh, measures their physical and psychological uh, uh, capacities. And um, we also cooperate and have uh, great support from military psychiatrists to find the right persons. Upon selection, the Jaegers take up a rigorous training schedule, which begins with a demanding obstacle course. As the weeks pass, the training intensifies with brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat, where the aggressiveness of each man is examined. The goals are the same as like in the Second World War, where they're going to try and teach a lot of people how to defend themselves or react in certain situations in the shortest amount of time. But when everything else fails, they're going to do the job, whatever it takes to get done. We train the special forces like reactionary forces. They've got two extremes. They have somebody they've got to put away, 
and the people they've got to save. Right? They've got to be able to handle both situations. So we don't say you do this in this situation, you do this in this situation, you use this tool. We give them a set of tools and they, and they're in that, in that situation, have, they've got to choose the tool to do the job in that time. The soldiers who become Jaegers have a great amount of self-confidence, a belief that they can solve any problem and the ability to push themselves beyond their natural limits. This Jaeger, who wishes to remain anonymous for security purposes, describes the kind of man the Jaegers are looking for. Definitely not John D. Rambo. Uh, we're looking for intelligent guys who can use their head, uh, who are able to improvise, uh, who have the stamina to go on when the, when the body says stop. Uh, people that are in relatively good uh, physical shape when they come here and that are willing to do something special. Due to the variety of operations Jaegers perform, they're trained in the use of many types of unique equipment. To avoid detection while swimming toward a target, Jaegers use the closed-circuit underwater breathing apparatus that recycles air and leaves no bubbles. You can use this uh, uh, oxygen system for about, uh, well, between two and three hours. It depends on how fast you're swimming, if it's cold, uh, how much equipment you're carrying with you. The kayak is another tool used in coastal operations. This small craft is deployed at night so that Jaegers can quietly sneak into enemy territory. It is light, durable in rough seas, and able to carry over 2,000 pounds. A piece of equipment dear to all Jaegers is the traditional Laplander knife. Its razor-sharp edge is always an asset in the outdoors. Because they often operate behind enemy lines without support and under extreme conditions, all Jaegers undergo extensive survival training in which they learn how to live off the land. One of the things you might be looking for when you're going to build a survival shelter is a fallen tree like the one we have here. You support the tree and then you build it up with uh, branches on the sides and on the top. When that is done, you make a small fire in front of it with a reflector and stones at the bottom. After approximately one, one and a half hour, the rocks are hot enough to boil water. And then you can also use it to heat your body. You take the stones, put them under your armpits, under, underneath your knees, on your stomach, and by doing that, you keep the body temperature up so you'll get a couple of hours of good sleep, even if the temperatures drop below zero degrees Celsius. True to their name, these Norwegian hunters rely on their specialized training and instincts to excel in an environment which is often cruel and unforgiving. The Jaeger's principal mission is reconnaissance and sabotage deep behind enemy lines. These elite commandos use a variety of insertion and extraction procedures, all of which would be normally performed at night. Go! Free fall training is an important step in every Jaeger's life. Here, each soldier hones his skills for two months on solid ground before heading toward the skies. Inherently silent, the parachute offers an excellent means of clandestine entry, except for the noise of the delivery aircraft. To solve this problem, the Jaegers use two different jump techniques in which the aircraft is kept far from the jump zone. Both techniques depend on jumping from altitudes as high as 30,000 feet. In the first technique, called halo, or high altitude low opening, the parachutist free falls at a speed of 200 feet per second for over two minutes before opening his chute at a safe altitude. 
In other situations, the HEHO, or high altitude, high opening system is used. In this technique, the Jaeger uses a maneuverable parachute in which he can guide himself accurately to the drop zone. The commander of an amphibious task force planning to storm a beach relies on a Jaeger recon team to find out what his men will encounter as they near the shore. Because this operation normally is performed at night, the Jaegers count their kicks while swimming into shore as a measure of the distance in order to return to the pickup point. The team analyzes the ocean bottom, the surf, and any possible obstacles. In this case, the site is unacceptable for any type of large amphibious assault. Their information gathered, the Jaegers swim back to the pickup point. Using this technique of high-speed water extraction, the men can be picked up quickly and efficiently without the enemy ever knowing that they were there. In uh, Norway, we have a very long uh, coastline. If you go by plane over an area, it's uh, quite easy to be detected by a radar, but it's uh, more difficult going uh, in from the sea. Jaegers utilize helicopters as ideal insertion aircrafts. They're highly maneuverable and have the ability to fly under enemy radar. Upon insertion behind enemy lines, the Jaeger's primary task is strategic and tactical reconnaissance with the ability to conduct small group strikes. Working as a five-man team, the Jaegers must be a self-sufficient, independent force. You normally spend the whole exercise together with the four or five blokes. Uh, certain parts of Norway you can walk for days and weeks without seeing anyone. Uh, so you're, you're there more or less on your own. Especially one exercise we had been out for uh, one and a half week. I mean, we're supposed to be uh, picked up by a helicopter up in the mountains. And we stayed there and waited for the helicopters. And uh, then we get a message on the radio that the helicopters wouldn't come. Then we had to, to go the same uh, 15 kilometers back and plus uh, another 10 to, to get to a road to uh, get a, a truck to pick us up. And um, that's, uh, that's some of the points when you, when you have to trust on each other because Wet and cold conditions are, the, are the, one of the worst conditions you can have. And uh, you really have to, to, to uh, practice what you learned earlier on in survival course and so on. We're looking for a man who is able to work as an individual. And at the same time, he is very dependent on the group that he is in. They must be a very stable group because they are living very tight together and they know a lot about each other and they must uh, live out whatever kind of uh, bad things happen among them. Each member of the team is trained and cross-trained in a different specialty. Navigation is a vital part of a team's ability to maneuver through foreign territory. Each Jaeger unit has a medical specialist. He undergoes 25 weeks of training to prepare himself for the challenges he'll face in the field. Surveillance specialists are the eyes and ears of every Jaeger team. Living in a hole in the ground for weeks at a time, these specially trained commandos monitor enemy activity in a specific area without detection. Jaegers are specially trained in vehicle recognition. They spend four weeks learning to identify various military vehicles that could be potentially threatening to Norway. While in the field, critical intelligence information is turned over to the communication expert, who signals it back to higher headquarters, where it's analyzed with other data. Possibly the most dangerous job in the team belongs to the demolition specialist. While setting the charges, he must pay close attention to every detail, as the slightest mistake could prove to be fatal. Using C4 explosives with petrol, this Jaeger sets up a configuration used in destroying a vehicle depot.
With its task accomplished, the Jaeger team is extracted and returned safely home. Their thoughts already on their next mission. The entire Norwegian army is trained in mountain and Arctic warfare. Fully mobilized, Norway could field an army of up to a quarter of a million people. Each reservist keeps his uniform and weapon at home, a lesson learned from the German occupation during World War II. As their forefathers did 50 years ago, the Jaegers today will fight to ensure that Norway is never again occupied by a foreign army. They are really making sure that never again will be a reality. And any forces that are very special they train very hard with the aim of carrying out, let's say, the message and the task of those who really was important to us during the war, the people of the military assistance, and those who took part in the special forces, Norwegian special forces, that operated from England against the German forces in Norway. They are taking over from them. Today's strategic military concerns lie in the possibility of a low-intensity conflict and terrorist attacks. With their rigorous and extensive training, no group is better prepared to handle such events than the Jaegers. For these young men, there is no higher honor than to wear the Red Beret. Well, it's uh, something they've been looking forward to most of their life, for some there, that is. Others, uh, well, as we go around promoting the service here, they just... Uh, jump for it and then they eventually get in here but everyone is very proud especially after the selection weeks and after the free full course everyone feels like uh, some hero he's managed something to do something that he thought perhaps he couldn't do so they're a very proud unit I can see these young people change in the course of this year I think one of the reasons uh, for this change is that they feel that they have accomplished something. They have really striven to accomplish a goal, to become a Jaeger. And after having gone through very hard and rough uh, physical and uh, psychological tests, they have a very good feeling inside. And I think, I, I really think I can see a growing self-confidence during that year. And um, looking, uh, back when they started here and after one year when they leave the uh, Heidensjäger Skola they are totally different persons in, in many respects. The time I've been, uh, been a Jäger I, uh, I've done a lot of things and it makes you uh, makes you feel kind of special uh, makes you feel uh, a sort of friendship with uh, other special units over the world and uh, especially with uh, the guys in the unit you get a very good uh, relationship i think that most of the guys uh, for for them it's it's the personal aspect that uh, feeling by yourself that that uh, you are good enough that you are able to do such a service so i guess it's not so much uh, that you are you are uh, trying to to impress uh, the others, your family and so on, it's, it's uh, mostly yourself 